My name's Brent Ryan, and uh, you're listening or viewing Songwriter TX, our show here at the Rock Box Theater featuring Texas's best songwriters. My name is Brent Ryan. I'm the host of this sh fine show, and we have the guests Dylan Tanner Hink tonight, and we also have Jerry Alice here. And then my uh, co-host over here, Boone Holding, is also uh, always here with me, sure. keeping the energy up for us. So... Thank you guys so much for coming. We really appreciate y'all coming out for the show tonight and supporting it. I have put out the, uh, the guitar case um, for donations for our musicians. Anything that goes in that case tonight, as we've done in the past, is 100% going to go to Dylan and Jerry Alice. It doesn't go to anything else. Uh, we pay them a very nominal, humble fee for, or uh, not fee, we don't charge you. Uh, we, we pay them a very, a very humble payout, yeah. What is this, Nashville? <laughs> Pay it out right now, let's show them. Um, but, uh, but, you know, it, it, a little bit of what we can do, but when you guys bless them, it is a huge thing. I've had, some of our songwriter guests have, have left with a tear in their eye. I've seen them get teary-eyed because of the blessing of what y'all put in that guitar case um, at the end of these shows. So if y'all can contribute to that, the guitar case is there. If you can't, it's no big deal, but it's certainly a blessing to them. You might not know this, but musicians don't make great money a lot of the time. It's, I don't know, it's, kind, of, it's kind of a fall. I mean, we all look like it's fancy clothes all the time, and you probably think we're rolling high. But, uh, hey, thrift yeah, store. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, let's kick off with another round, and then we'll come up with a fun question. How's that? Y'all ready to play another round? Y'all feel yeah. good? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Do it, too. Your turn to start first. Mr. Oh, she's kicking it at you, man. Yeah. Well, switch a rooski. We're down with that. Okay. Keeping us on our toes, you know. I tell the musicians, by the way, that they can bring their merch if they want to. And I heard Dylan say that he had a few CDs. I don't know if you put them out there or not, but I just want to see real quick. Do any do any of y'all listen to CDs? Raise your hand if you listen to CDs. Wow, really? Oh. Oh, you guys are my people. <laughs> they exist. Yeah. yeah. Nobody buys CDs. It's become a little bit of, a, of an ancient medium, but uh, I guess we should keep bringing the CDs, yeah, man. I should, so, I should yeah. have brought more than five, and I should good, have put them out. Pretty good percentage there, so yeah. Uh, I say within 15 years, they're making a comeback anyway. Oh, they'll, they'll make a comeback. They'll for sure make a comeback. Every, all the kids will have the CD players in their room, you know, and be like, that's what I had. Did you know you can sell like a Sony, like an original Sony Walkman? like the cassette Walkmans on eBay for like $200 right oh, now. Oh, wow. Like people think they're cool collectibles. It's like, why didn't I keep those things, <laughs> <Yeah>. man? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Sorry. If you guys would yeah. like a CD, you can come find me after the show and I'll, I'll get one for you. Oh, my volume was down. Listen to it on your Walkman. <laughs> so with most songs, um, I can usually... Um, pinpoint them to like a particular event or an emotion or like something happened, song came. And it gives me an easy way to tell a story before I play the song. Um, but this is, this is my newest song and I was driving here and I was thinking about, well, what do I tell them about this one? What inspired this song? And I, for, for, I couldn't think of anything. I was like, you know, some, I don't even remember writing it really. Usually there's, a, like I said, there's an event and it's like, oh, this is how I'm feeling. This is the thing. And I write the song. But with this one, it just kind of came out of the blue and I wrote it. And I was thinking, what's the deal with that? And then it, it, I realized that this wasn't like a lightning bolt moment, emotional charge songwriting experience. This was something that's been, I think, brewing in me probably my whole life. And so it came out finally. Like, <laughs> like a good pot of coffee. Yeah, man. I, I was thinking of it like a rain cloud, right? Like it's just gathering moisture all until it just gets too heavy and then it falls out. Rain falls. And uh, yeah, this one's called Be a Man. Enough to take it on the chin and 
and then I'll walk away. Is it holding back tears when your firstborn moves away? Or opening the gates to let them fall like rain? Don't worry about me, just asking for a friend. But tell me, do you know? takes to be a man Do you have to drive a truck Love to fish and have a gun Can you meditate and pray for peace to everyone Is it Being true to where you are and where your heart stands Or oh, blind faith in what they say what you can't seem to understand Don't worry about me Just asking for a friend But tell me, do you know What it takes to be a man? sure you're there at every ball game for the kids or working late to get that raise so they can have more than you did is it working with your hands in the field every day or can you write songs about things we think but we never say don't worry about Tell me, do you know? Tell me, do you know? Don't worry about me. I'm perfectly content. But tell me, do you know what it takes to be a man? What it takes to be a man? What it takes to be a man? Thank you. And I'm telling you, Dylan, man, I just have a feeling that one of these days, man, one of these beautiful songs that you've written is going to really take some type of a, a level, man. You know, yeah, I thanks, just, I, I really have a feeling. You know what I mean? So just keep writing them, man. Yeah, Thank very you, good. Definitely. Thank you. I think, I think more of the world will be exposed to some of your, of your music in the future. I'll put it that way. Really. Very good. That'll be it's nice. A great song. Very nice. We got Thanks. a few tonight. Yeah. <clears throat> what so you got, uh, I represent the Lollipop Guild. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Somehow <laughs> in my career and over my life, uh, I never did get married or have a family, and so um, my ideas and, and observations about life and songwriting are, are a little different from uh, Dylan's here, and, and his are just so beautiful. Wow, I mean, I just, I respect these men so highly. I just, I'm so proud of y'all for being on a good path and, and doing things that matter. So thank you. Thanks, That's Jim. very inspiring. Oh. Yeah. At least on Facebook we are. <laughs> no, I'm hey, just kidding. <laughs> stay on your rug, okay? <laughs> but anyway, so uh, this is a little song I wrote for my, my mama. Because she liked the blues, and I, I didn't know anything about the blues, although I did play in an all-girl blues band. <laughs> and we opened for Stevie Ray Vaughan. Wow. And I'm out there playing the lead guitar in front of Stevie Ray Vaughan. I'm going, how did I get here? <laughs> That's going to be the name of my next record. <laughs> how did I get here? Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, good. Man. Anyway, so my mama liked the blues, so I tried to write her a blues song. I'm not sure I succeeded, but... It's called, I'm a Cowgirl, or otherwise, Cowgirl Cantata. All right.
me a horse with all the saddle I've been living on the edge of the old pen handle door find me a man who will ride all night and to the sunset I can't deny it I'm a cow wow girl I'm a space cowgirl and out in the desert I was in from the cold checking the weather pining for gold I was out in the desert I'm feeling all right cause I got you right by my side Space cowgirl. The space cowgirl is a theme. So just real quick, what is that? So my daddy was literally a rocket scientist. So I can't, I don't have that excuse. I can't say it's not rocket science. <laughs> but when I was growing up, we always had like spaceships on one side and cows on the other because we always <laughs> lived in the middle of nowhere. You know, they'd like dredge up the sand and then prop up all the spaceships there and create their little world. So that's where I, I Remember I was telling you all earlier I had all these combinations? That was yet another one. It's <laughs> yeah. like, wait a minute, I like cows, but I saw all these astronauts go off into space. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for listening. That song is uh, <laughs> cool. a, a good example of what I was explaining earlier uh, when I met you, that your sound is definitely unique and different. If I were hearing that song uh, for the first time, you know, which... I think that was the first time I've heard it. I can't remember if I heard that one recorded or not, but uh, I don't know what I would call that. I don't, as far as genre goes, like yeah, yeah it has some blues in it, but yeah. it's just fun. I mean, that's just a, it's, it's just your spirit coming out. I think yeah, that's cool. Jerry you know, Alice. Yeah, I was gonna say it's Jerry yeah. Alice. That's <laughs> what you love that. Um, and so a uh, question that comes to mind for you guys, uh, here lately I've had, and this has happened anyway, songwriters can be very dramatic people. Um, and I have friends who multiple times, it's like they throw their stuff down, metaphorically speaking, and say, I'm done with this. I'm done. I'm done with the industry. I'm quitting. Um, there's a guy I follow who wants to be on this show. I won't ball him out but by name. But who posted all over Dude. social media this past week. <laughs> That he's for now, he's done playing original songs. He's just going to do covers from now on because that's where the money is. Nobody listens to the originals. He's wasted his life for 20 years. He's done. And then about a week or two later, they're releasing new music, or you know, they got I, here's a new album I got coming out, or you know, I'll be playing at these places. Um, it's just drama, but I understand it because what we do can feel very empty a lot of the time. Um, and you were mentioning. Dylan, about how you kind of you're, you're kind of just riding the wave now. You're not trying to push your songwriting career into any certain, certain directions. 
my experience has been uh, the musicians that I'm friends with who sort of get into that path tend to be happier um, simply because the music industry is really whack right now. Uh, there used to be a road that you would kind of take. It was a map. It was like, well, I'm going to build an audience and then I'll try to go to Nashville and I'll record and I'll, you know, see if the big labels, some, some label will pick me up and then they'll, they'll throw me out to the broader audience and that's how I'm going to be discovered, how I'm going to get big or something. Now it's Wild West. There is no path. It's like, no, there's no rules anymore. And even if you do make it big, you maybe have a year before they're looking to replace you. I say all that to say, for you guys, where do you find your, um, your meaning in what you do? How do you embrace it and hold on to it so that you don't throw down your guitar next week and say, I'm done with this garbage, I'm done with this thing? I listened to both those songs y'all played in that last round and thought to myself, that would be a struggle in the corner of a pizza house, you know? Um, I don't know how that song would really be appreciated when everybody's drinking a beer and talking over it. It's too good. It's too meaningful. Both of the songs y'all played, actually every song y'all played tonight, I just think would be buried in that kind of environment. And yet we as performers play those kind of environments all the time. So it's hard to find like, man, is this, why did I even write this song? Who did I do this for? Is anybody paying attention? So share a little bit about how you find meaning to keep doing it again tomorrow, to keep the door open for whatever comes next. How do you find that? It's a good question. Um, there's a lot to it, man. I think it comes, I think, for me, it depends on where I am in life and right now. Um, I just have, I gotta wrap my head around that. I wasn't, that wasn't where I was go wanting to go with it. Um, <laughs> you got him, Brent. You got him. <laughs> I do. It can be hard. It can be hard. And I'm actually in a transition phase right now where I'm playing less, a lot less gigs because um, I'm tired of playing in the corner of the pizza shop yeah. or at the winery where everybody is there. And they're not, you know, it depends. What, like, why are you doing it? Like, why, why do we do this? And for a while, I didn't have, uh, this was my job. There was a small period of my life where I said, I'm going to play music. And I had to go play music to pay what bills I had. Yeah. And um, that, for me, kind of sucked all the fun out of it, man. It turned into a job really quick. And mm -hmm. so there's just a lot of different factors where you are in life. And, and if it, is it your sole means of income? For me personally, I have come to a place where, like when I was first started writing songs, I really, really, really wanted to be a good songwriter. And it was kind of like, I mean, you can ask my wife, it was hard the first couple years because she was like, can you talk about something other than songs, dude? It was all, I was just laser focused and I wrote as often as I could. If I didn't write a song in a certain amount of time, I was bummed out about it and I set aside time for writing and I would make it this big thing and I would light a candle and I would write and I don't, that, that all ended a long time ago and my perception of it has changed since then and now for me personally, it's just this super fun thing that I get to do. Like I've, I've realized that um, it's therapeutic for me and it's a gift and I love writing and I love music and I put them together and I think that when you start putting expectations in the way, it can really suck the joy out of it real fast. You yeah, know? yeah, that probably goes for anything in life too, yeah. really, you know? And it, it, yeah, so I have zero expectations and I take the songs when they come and I'm just happy to play for audiences that will listen to them and it's just pretty simple like that for me these it's days. It's funny when you ask that question, Brent, and I think I've been in the corner of a pizza place and played this heartfelt song. Nobody listens to it and I think, why in the world did I even write this damn song? And then the owner comes and brings me the free pizza and I'm like, that's why I wrote it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? There's I've been answer. hungry for so long. You know what I mean? All I had to do was write this. Perspective. <laughs> if we all had the perspective of Boone, right, life hungry. would be a, this would be a wonderful yeah. world. So I keep you around, buddy, so I can stay in the game. It's like I used to have to steal these pizzas. <laughs> I wrote a song. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I always, I never want to demotivate my musician friends by telling them to like lower their expectations. I don't even know that it's a matter of lowering expectations as so much as surrendering them entirely. That's just kind of been what's worked best for me. Um, but I find that really, I find your answer really fascinating yeah, because um, it, it is a tough game out there. And I, I always tell my musician friends, discouragement is your worst enemy. So whatever you have to do to stay away from discouragement, stay away from that. You know, find meaning in something, even if it's a simple meaning, like, uh, like I do this for my kids, or um, I just do it for that one person who this song might affect, or something like that. You know, and try to grab onto that thing. Um, like, I don't know where the music world's going to go, you know, in the future. But uh, what do you think, Jerry Alice? Do you have a, a what's your perspective on that? I've always had original music, you know, I was in a band and we had fun and then I moved out here and I was like, where is everybody? Yikes. <laughs> and so I started just playing guitar by myself and writing songs by myself and I did that for a while and I put out a couple of albums and then I decided I need to supplement my income. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I started playing around and I learned about 150 cover songs, but I only learned the ones I really like. So even with that, I'm still sitting in the corner at a pizza place and uh, wondering, you know, what people are asking themselves, what is that song she's singing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's how I roll. I mean, it has to be authentic. I mean, for that word, back to that word. Mm -hmm. So um, I do enjoy performing. I enjoy being around people and singing for people. And I especially love it when the little kids get up and dance. That is like, <laughs> yeah. to me, yeah. that's yeah, cool. the biggest payday yeah. of all. I yeah. think that kids, uh, when I play out, it always seems like the kids that are, are the most interested. Yeah. You know, it, it, they seem to, their eyes meet you. Like, what is this person doing over here? Oh, yeah. It's either it's kids be, or drunk people. <laughs> yeah, or both. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's like, hey, that guy's got to be over there playing for free pizza. For sure. <laughs> what is he doing Maybe over there? Maybe he'll share his pizza. Yeah. I probably would. Yeah, honestly. you know. I'm, I'm impressed probably. that's been your experience because kids, when kids in my show are always doing this. Yeah. Earmuffs. Earmuffs. <laughs> that ain't right. Hey, man, yeah, put those yeah, hands down. Yeah. Listen. You know, whenever you, uh, I think whenever. It, for me personally, when I've ever gotten burned out in anything in life, I think uh, as I've gotten older, I've pulled myself back from it. And like, why, why am I even doing this? You know, why am I wasting my, my time and my life even doing this? And then uh, if I ask myself that and I can't think of an easy answer, a very simple answer, then it's like, you know, that's pr you've probably got some detail that maybe you're wasting your time. But like for songwriting, I think, again, it's like I just... At the end of the day, regardless of anything else that happens, you just enjoy to get this instrument that's been a release to you, yeah. and sometimes you pick it up, and, mm -hmm. and there's something there, you know? So if, if that's all I ever get out of it, I'll take it. It's you know very, what I mean? They're very therapeutic, don't you think? Yeah, you said it at the yeah. beginning. You said when you first picked up a guitar, you started writing songs, and you, you didn't know anything different. Yeah. And uh, that's, it was the same way for me, and I think that... There's a big difference between being a songwriter and being a, a performer and a, someone who's trying to make a name for themselves and try to make something. Um, I think that there's just a big difference there. I think I'll probably always write songs because I just yeah. haven't stopped yet. They just keep coming and I love it. And I, I've had people that want to go down that path and get better at writing songs and one friend, um, he would always try to pick my brain. He's like, how do you do it? How do you write a song? I can get, I can get kind of, and, and I can get like half of it, but I can't finish it. And I don't have anything to tell him. I'm like, look, man, you either write songs or you don't write songs. Like, if you <laughs> yeah. want to write the song, you write the song. Yeah. There's nothing more to it, you yeah. know? I, I was uh, I, interviewing back in the spring. I got to interview uh, William Clark Green, big Texas country guy uh, with my past job. And... Um, he's a tried and true songwriter, and he was telling me, he's like, he said something very similar. He said, I always write songs. It's, it's too much in him, like, you can't not write them. But he's a big deal right now. Like, he could come and fill up, you know, Flores Country Store or 11th Street Cowboy Bar or whatever, Luchenbach, and, uh, and sell out a crowd. But he was telling me the day that it happens when that's no longer the case and nobody's coming out to my shows, he's like, I think I'll still 
I'll still have to write songs. He said, I'll probably just fund it out of my own pocket, and it's not going to sound as good. You know, it's not going to be a multi thousand dollar buddy. production. Yeah, you, yeah. He's like, but I'm going to do it. And I come and on I, over to my place. I really uh, <laughs> our side of the fence, huh? But I really, I really admire that. I think that it's like if it's really what your art and the your creativity is, the then you can ride the wave of getting bigger, getting smaller, and fading into obscurity or whatever. And it's like, well, it's, I mean, this is what I'm going to do. Just enjoying the ride. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, enjoying so. the process of what you do and then and then putting that passion into it because it deserves it you know it deserves it yeah right. absolutely well, let's give another tune here that's what they're here for right let's play another song for them mm -hmm. go it for it who played last oh you're asking the wrong guy I don't even know. Yeah, y'all swapped I around, so you're up. Uh, I think uh, I ask did. Brent, he's got it. Dylan's been going the first one uh, here in the second half, so y'all y'all swapped sides like football players. Okay. Hey, we're equitable around here. Yeah, yeah you know. switch it up a little bit. Mixing things up, keeping people light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a new song. I think all the songs I played tonight are, are new, and they're going to be on a new record coming out in sometime. Pretty good answer. <laughs> yeah. Whenever the money's there to finish. Well, you're it. not lying. That's for sure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But this is one that um, I wrote, and lately, the past couple of years, I've uh, a lot of the songs that I've been writing are, you know, I've been frustrated with. You know, you get on you get on social media or something, and there's just so much negativity and so much hatred and the division is getting deeper and deeper and man how as a song i mean how can you not see what's going on you know and and just me being a songwriter like how can that not come out in my songs i've been probably writing about it too much lately <laughs> What's that? I was terrible at math and sucked at division. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah, math wasn't terrible. my thing either. But you're good at dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> this song came out of that headspace, man. It's just about really how we're so lucky to be here. We're like just here in this on this beautiful ball of dirt floating in space, and we're out here. Radio? We're not on the radio. We're out here bitching about all sorts of silly stuff, you know? Everybody's fighting about all sorts of silly crap. It doesn't really matter. None of it matters. And then there's these people in the media that are controlling everybody, and it's just all messed up. And this, We took something that's like so simple and just we're messing it up, and that's what this song is about. It's called Something Simple. Gotta name it, 
Gotta take something that's so simple and find a way to complicate it. They live inside your pocket and six o'clock news. Now they got us divided and fighting like fools. Guess I'll go right out and say it Yeah, we're out solving problems But we're the ones that went and made them We're all brainwashed now, baby Waging war with our own neighbor We took something that's so simple And went and made it complicated Thank you. Okay, man. Thank you. Yeah, I've always been fond of uh, you know people that write to the Times, and and uh, it's it's one thing that I've gone back and forth with it in my own head is that uh, today you know when we look at the songwriters of the past and people that we idolize like you know Jerry Jeff Walker and and Willie Nelson and and Stevie Ray Vaughan and all the people of our state that had 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 left this legacy. Um, they didn't leave it because they were ever trying to copy anything or be something that they weren't. They did it because they were just being authentic at the time and uh, being what society was and what it was calling for. And I think a lot of people run from that today. You know, they don't, you know, they don't, you know, you, you, when you write songs, you know, you speak to the times, right? Uh, everyone has a different approach to it, but... It's a risky you know, business, man. Well, but, it, but it is, but it's, also the pro but it's also what we're doing, you know? It makes no sense if you're not, you know? Like, we're all living in the world that we're living in, so it's all, it's all there. And uh, if, we're not, if we're not putting out music that is, it, are of the times that we live in, then it's almost like later on, 20, 30 years, if people listen to it, it's like we're doing a disservice because we're not even talking about what was going on, you know what I mean? Or, or expressing what we were feeling. We're trying to be something that we're not, right? Yeah. So I like that. I like when people take that chance. And uh, when you first get someone that uh, storms out on that song or throws something at you, I'm gonna <laughs> hope, hopefully I'm there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding, I like it. I think it's good. And, and uh, I've been writing a lot of those this last two I years. I think it's cool, man, just do I, it. Every time I write a new one, I go over to my wife, I'm like, hey, you wanna hear my new song? <laughs> She's like, is it about religion or politics? I'm like, yeah. She's like, dude, you gotta write about something else, man. Right it's about coming, it's dog. coming, it's coming. Just give us some time, give us some time. Yeah. You know, you'll get, a, you'll get one out of it though, trust me. You'll get a keeper out of there. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> I love that, I like it. I think it's good. Fantastic. What do you got, Jerry Ellis? Uh, this song I wrote the day after a tornado. It's called A Song for Jacob.
blessings for the mother's tears then he said hear my word you will see the hummingbird she's saying love 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 what you need come to me is guaranteed love 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 here to stay take my hand I I'm the way Well, no one here sees past this veil we see now darkly vision pales then he said my father see put down your yoke and follow me we sing in love 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 is what you need come to me it's guaranteed love 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 is here to stay take my hand Thank, Thank you all so much. Right, let's do one more round here tonight um, and let these guys uh, get a little bit of sleep. But um, thank you all again for coming. Uh, thank you, Jam Broadcasting. Even though I had technical issues tonight, they're here. They're representing. We'll get this show out there on the radio once we get it recorded and, uh, and bleep out Dylan's words from his last song. And, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it. Hey, it man, there's passion. It. There's passion behind the yeah. songwriting. Um, but, uh, but no, we'll, uh, we'll get that taken care of, and I'll let you guys know when we release it. Thank you all for being here tonight. Again, the guitar case is out. I want to tell you all real quick that um, next month is September, right? So our two guests next month, I think you all are going to be excited about this. It's going to be a cool show. going to be a huge show. Uh, we're going to have Mike Blakely here be his second time at Songwriter TX, but first time here at the Rockbox Studio. How many of you all know Mike? You're my player, yeah. So one of the best songwriters here in Gillespie County, Fredericksburg, and has got a huge history of, uh, of, of writing songs uh, that have been recorded by some of Texas's best. And he's a novelist. He's published like nine novels or something like that. So, um, and then the Maybe he'll teach me how to read, man. You think so? <laughs> well, if we ask him nicely? Let's not ask for things that we can't accomplish. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Expectations, yeah. Moon. Expectations. <laughs> the, other, uh, the other guest is going to be Andy Holloman. A-N-D-I is her name. Andy Holloman. She's a New Braunfels female songwriter who is just killing it right now. She got to be a guest when Boone and I were doing the show just in the Jam Broadcasting studio. And we were blown away with her yeah, songs and her good. voice. Uh, and her story. Is, her yeah, story is she's phenomenal. she's got such a heart. Um, and so it's going to be a really strong show. would love to see you all here for that. So This song would have been good um, after your last question for us about just kind of keeping going and what keeps you going. And uh, this is kind of my answer right here. Um, this... Sometimes, like, you know, I've got three boys, 17, 7, and 5 at home, and sometimes it's, uh, it's really hard to go leave for a gig on, you know, a, like a beautiful Saturday when the sun's shining and they're outside playing and dad's got to go. And I've been doing that a lot less lately because it just sucks. I don't like it. And uh, last March, February in February, I was scheduled to play the Corpus Christi Songwriters Festival, and I had kind of put off leaving as long as I could, and um, so I was, it was Saturday morning, and I was loading up to head to Corpus, and my boys were going to SeaWorld that day with my wife, and they were just pumped, and they let me know that they were, they were sad that Dad wasn't going to be there, and it's just like, things like that are hard for me. I didn't like it at all. But I, I left and I, I made it through San Antonio and I was on 37 heading south and um, I was thinking about life and I was just thinking about how we just, you just get to wake up every day and make decisions. You just get, you're just presented with all these options and choices and you get to choose on anything. And 
I really wanted to go to SeaWorld with my, with my boys, but I was telling myself all these stories about, man, if I skip Saturday's showcases, all the other songwriters are gonna think I'm that D-bag that just shows up to play my set, or maybe the festival people won't have me back again because I didn't take it, I wasn't there for the whole thing, or, you know, telling myself all those stories and there's this invisible pressure, and this is literally what happened. You know how at SeaWorld there's like the little caterpillar roller coaster? Yeah. I pictured, like a little mini, I pictured, I thought about my boys like sitting in the caterpillar roller coaster, like looking at my wife, like with the, you know, cheese and huge, huge smile on their faces. And I was, the thought that I wasn't gonna be there to see that just like tore me up. And I was like, man, screw it. And so I exited and I turned around and I, I texted the Corpus Christi guy and was like, hey man, I'm not gonna, I'll be there late. And uh, I went to SeaWorld and I sat down I got there before them and I sat down on the curb and I wrote this song for my boys. It's a long story. Here's the song. It's called Choose You. Drop all my shit and run straight through the night 
you all so much for being here and listening to me. Thanks, Thank you, Bill. Really good. I should have gone first. <laughs> <laughs> Do your thing, Jerry Ellis. There's only out, one Jerry out, Ellis. That's right. It's played out just like it should. Yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. How many of y'all have ever been to Marfa, Texas? Have you seen the lights? All right, well, I went and I saw the lights and I uh, went home the next day and wrote this song. I went back the next day to the Marfa Chamber of Commerce and I said, hey, I wrote y'all a song. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like, all right, lady. <laughs> but anyway, I did end up playing at the Marfa Lights Festival <laughs> twice, so that was kind of fun. That was cool. So this is that song. Texas, see the lights of Marfa going 
back where I belong to see the Martha lights, to see the Martha lights, yeah, yeah, see the Martha lights, to see the Martha lights. That was like a little symphony. Yeah, that was awesome. Cool. Well, thank you all so much. I'm thank so blessed and honored for you all to be here as guests tonight. Jerry Alice, Dylan Tanner, Hink. Thank you guys, Songwriter TX audience. Thank you, Jam Broadcasting, the Rockbox Theater, and of course, FBG.live. We'll get this video out for you guys. And uh, we'll see you next time here in September, all right? Second Wednesday of September. See you all then, all right? Woo.